He's black. He's brutal. He's boss. What up, people? It's your boy C4 coming back at you with another video. Uh, right now, I'm going to give y'all my impressions on the Microsoft conference. Unlike everybody else, this will not be a rant video talking about shit that we already know about. If you want to see a rant, if you want to see somebody hating on Microsoft, this is not going to be the video. Uh, I have two rant videos about all that DRM bullshit. It's going to be in, uh, you know, in the video response section if that's what you want to see. I'm not about to give you none of that biased bullshit. I'm about to give you a straight unbiased review of what we saw today and give you my opinions on it. Um, start off the show, they showed uh, Metal Gear Solid. The uh, Phantom Pain looked amazing. I have never been a fan of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Um, when it came to Spy Games, I was always a, a Splinter Cell guy. But this game looked amazing epic it started off looking like red dead redemption and i had to remember that this was a game by kojima so i was like nah this ain't red dead redemption but it looked amazing um the setting looked great the graphics looked great uh the story seemed like it's gonna be a little bit more set in reality than the other ones so i'm really digging that um next they went off into talking about the xbox 360 and how they're going to continue to support it um i like that because when you, we all know when it came to the original xbox when the 360 came out they dropped the xbox like a like a bad habit so i'm glad to hear that they're going to continuously support the 360 and they also came up with some new perks they're getting rid of microsoft points they're going to cash which is awesome they also announced that if you are an Xbox Live Gold member, you will be getting two free games a month, starting off with Assassin's Creed 2 and Halo 3. Now, they're old titles, but it is what it is. Um, I've seen a lot of people complain about this, saying, oh, they're copying off of Sony and so on and so forth. This is the thing that trips me out with people. I'm not going to go off into a rant on it. I just got to say this, because this is what trips me out with people. A lot of people complaining about them saying they're giving away two free games, and then they're saying they're giving away old games. That's exactly what Sony does. Now, at first you was complaining, you were saying people pay for Xbox Live and they aren't getting anything for it. Now, Microsoft gives away two free games a month that you get to keep. Not only like it, play, not, not is it like PlayStation Plus, where you can only keep them as long as you're a PlayStation Plus member. Even when your Xbox Live Gold runs out, you continuously keep these games that are yours. You aren't renting them like you are on the PlayStation 3. So that's a plus, but people love something to have something to bitch about. So it is what it is. I just had to speak on that because I've been watching people's videos and all I've heard was negativity. But next we go into the new console that they dropped on us. Um, I like the look of it. I'm actually in need of a 360, so um, I was thinking of, I actually ordered one, but I don't know how it got lost in Virginia, so I got a refund from um, Amazon, which I guess, you know, things work for a reason. I will check that one out. Um, I like the look of it. It looks pretty sleek. Um, it's nothing major. It's really just a, you know, exterior design. It does the same thing as the slim in the original um but next they show world of tanks which will be free to all gold members free to play game which i thought was cool um the game doesn't look bad but it just doesn't seem like something that i would play but for free what the hell i'll try it out next they show max uh the brotherhood or something like that i forgot what it was called looks like an interesting uh platformer I'm not really into platformers, but it looks like it could be a good game. Uh, next, they show Dark Souls 2. Um, it looks like it has promise, but to be honest with you, I haven't played Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1. So I can't really speak on that, but it looks like it could be an interesting title. I just think I need to give the first ones a shot before I jump into that. And then after they talked about the uh, 360 for a while, then they jumped into the Xbox One, which is what we wanted to see. Um, they started off showing Rise, a trailer for Rise, which looked dope as hell. I loved it. And then after the trailer, they went into actual gameplay. And this game looked great to me. A lot of people keep on comparing it to God of War. Um, 
I guess you can compare it to that. But to me, it had its own uh, unique look and style, and I liked it. The gameplay looked fun. The graphics looked great. Looks like a great title for the uh, Xbox One to have it as an exclusive. Um, then they went into Killer Instinct. Now, I've never been a fighting game fan, so I'm not going to hype this up just because it's an exclusive. Um, but it looked pretty decent, I guess. It kind of reminded me of Clay Fighters from back on the Sega Genesis. Um, but good game to have as an exclusive. Um, then they showed Sunset Overdrive. Now, this is what got me excited because when I heard the name Sunset Overdrive, I thought it was going to be a racing game. It turned out to be something totally out of left field. It's like a uh, free-running zombie game, I guess you would call it. Looked good from the trailer. You know, the trailer aspects of it look good. Trailers always look good. But I can't wait to see more about that. That looked like a decent title. And then they went into Forza 5. Never been a fan of Forza. I'm not really a fan of racing games in general. However, this game did look epic. It looked great. Uh, Forza games always look good. I simply just enjoy looking at them, never enjoy playing them. Um, but they did announce that this game will be in 1080p, 60 frames per second. So that should be good for people like Black Bond who dwell on frames per second. Um, then they announced Minecraft, a uh, Xbox One exclusive for the console, I guess you would say. Um, cool, not really a fan of Minecraft, but if you are a fan, I know their fan base is huge, so that's a good thing to have on the console. Um, then they went into a, I guess it was a CGI cutscene. I won't say that was gameplay because I'm not sure, but they went into a like CGI trailer of Quantum Break. It looked good. Um, the premise of it seems to be quite interesting. Can't wait to see some more of that. Um, then we saw D4. Now, this game reminded me of a game called Killer7. I'm sure Nintendo fans um, know what I'm talking about. I believe it was on the GameCube, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe the PlayStation 2. It's been a while. But that game reminded me of Killer7 a lot, and I liked Killer7. Um, next, they showed Project Spark. This game... I fell in love with it when I saw it because it's essentially giving you the tools to create your own game and then you can play them with your friends. Um, it's kind of like uh, Little Big Planet meets Scribble Knots. You know, it was great. I loved what I saw and I can't wait to see more uh, from that game. The simple fact that the controllers in your hand. I am a sucker for creation and the fact that I can create my own world, my own game and invite my friends to play it with me. Great. It also has smart glass support, which I thought was awesome. Um, then they showed the fact that you could, you could load something in the background while playing another game. Like uh, the lady came out and she was loading up killer instinct a matching killer instinct while she was playing rise and i thought that was cool um you know the fact that while something is loading you could automatically hop back in and finish another game that's cool because if something has a load time or whatever you're waiting to get into something i think it's great that you could play a game while something's loading in the background and then they also showed that you can instantly stream to twitch now we already uh knew this was coming because twitch came to the 360 not too long ago so the fact that you could stream to twitch i thought was a great addition to the console um you know because a lot of people can't afford a pvr or don't necessarily want to spend the money or have a computer strong enough and all of that jazz so the fact that you could record live to twitch i thought that was amazing and you can also take gameplay uh you know edit it up or whatever you need to do upload it kind of like on live where you could uh take some gameplay record it and put it on the internet for all your friends to see um you know they'll probably have little lobbies where people who play that game could see it or whatever thought those was all cool and then they showed crimson dragon which looked pretty good but it was a sound fail because it was absolutely no sound whatsoever but technical difficulties happen during live events. Um, Dead Rising 3. Oh, man. Great. Love it, love it, love it. 
I was never really a fan of Dead Rising 1 or 2 or Off the Rack or any of those other ones. The premise of the games were great, but they always kind of fell short to me. Um, animations, gameplay, it all just always felt so clunky. And I've never been a fan, but this one looks great. The animations, I see some animations from the first two in there, but it looks a lot smoother. The game's graphics are beautiful. Um, the amount of zombies on screen is crazy. It looks like a great game. It looks like it's going to be a real fun game. And it also has smart glass support, uh, which is awesome. And it can be played in co-op, which has been confirmed, which I was when I was watching them play it, I was like, man, I hope this game got co-op. Turns out it does. And they hit you with the bombshell at the end and told you Dead Rising 3 will be an exclusive to the Xbox One, which I thought was a great piece of news for the Xbox crowd. Um, then they showed Witcher 3, which I thought looked amazing. I mean, I am a fan of Witcher 2. I own the Witcher 2, uh, what was it, a special edition, I believe, that was on the 360. So the Witcher 3, thumbs up, love it. Can't wait to get into that. Um, Battlefield 4, oh man, I know y'all saw it. It was an epic fail on whoever was backstage part. Um, if we sat there for like two whole minutes just waiting for something to happen and nothing happened. The guy was ready to walk off stage and then, you know, he, they, he said, well, we'll show you later. And then the guy said, oh, we're going to stay on stage? Oh, okay. He was <laughs> he was getting heckled and everything. It was it was funny. But, um, yeah, they finally showed some Battlefield 4. Um, from what I'm hearing, it was PC gameplay, but it still looked good. I'm not really a Battlefield fan, but it looked good. Um, and then we saw a game from Black Tusk, which is an exclusive, which they showed a like a guy climbing down the side of a building. It looked like Rainbow Six, but I don't know what that was. It was just called a Black Tusk game or whatever. Uh, we'll find out more about that later. And then they showed a trailer of a guy, looked like a monk, walking in the desert. And I'm like, what is this game? What is this game? And the guy's walking in this big ass mech just come out the ground and from the from the wind the wind blow back and the hood come off his head and it's fucking master chief now i said before this event i did not want to see a halo or a gears because we've seen enough this generation to last us the entire next generation um but i can't lie when i saw that i was like oh shit you know i wasn't expecting that I should have, but I wasn't expecting it. So, I, but I guess it's cool for the Halo fan base. I've never been a Halo fan, and a lot of people don't understand it. And it's like, how do you like the original Xbox and the 360 and not like Halo? I'm just not a fan of the franchise. No, you know, no disrespect to it or whatever, but it's not my cup of tea. And lastly, they ended the show with Titan Fall, and this looked epic. Um, I'm not really a fan of first person shooters, but this game reminded me so much of Mech Assault on the original Xbox mixed with some, I guess you would say Call of Duty or Battlefield, I don't know, but it looked epic. Um, I am so glad that Microsoft took this as an exclusive uh, for their console because this looks like this will be the multiplayer game to have when you get an Xbox One. I enjoyed it, it looked amazing. And then they ended the show with a bomb. You know, they dropped the bomb on me and they announced the price and they said it will be $499. 500 goddamn dollars. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but at the same time, I wasn't really surprised. And as usual, the Sony drones talking about ain't nobody paying five hundred dollars for that and i find it hilarious when you think about it because they paid six hundred dollars for an inferior console to this one you know but at the end of the day it is what it is five hundred dollars is what it is either you're going to get with it or you're not um i probably won't get it day one um however i did enjoy what i saw and as far as a grade i'd give it an a 
for the simple fact that Microsoft did what they said they were going to do. They came there. They showed the games. And to all you people who kept on saying those 15 exclusives were going to be 15 Connect games, the joke is on you because Microsoft did not show one single Connect game at the conference. They did show one before the conference at the pre-show, um, which was Connect Sports Rivals. They did show one, but they did not show a single Connect game at the conference. And I got to give them a round of applause for that because everybody thought they were going to be doing Connect. And personally, I would have liked to see some Connect. I know people don't like it, um, but it is, you know, on the system. And I would like to see what it could do gaming wise. And if a company is working on a new Connect game, I know they didn't show it for the simple fact that they knew people were going to bitch and moan about it as always, but they bitching and moaning anyway. So you can't please everybody, Microsoft. Um, they didn't talk about the DR rim and all of that, but for me, I just wanted to see what they were going to show. Um, like I said, I'm not going to downplay the event because they didn't talk about the DR rim because we pretty much already know what it is. We need to know it's no sense in beating a dead horse over the head. Um, they talked about it. They said what they wanted to say, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, like I said, I give the conference an A. I enjoyed it. They showed what they needed to show me, which was the games. Um, on a number scale, I give it a, I give it a nine out of ten. This was Microsoft's best E3 in years. I mean, years. Um, I give them mad props for what they showed today. It was good. They showed us the games. We already saw the console. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. Stay tuned because I will be doing a review on the Sony conference next. This your boy C4. Chat with me and I'm out.